cupcakes but today we're switching it up and we are making giant size so this is a massive cake this is actually just served 10 to 15 people so much bigger than our standard mini cupcake but who can complain with more cake right so tune in because I'm ready to make this fun giant cupcake with you so today I've already pre-baked a giant cupcake so I've got the base here and the top I've decided to just go vanilla to keep it nice and easy but of course change it up however you like I've just got my cake board, a piping bag, some cute sprinkle pearl balls to go on the top. I've already pre-coloured the buttercream, so I've gone a pastel green and a pastel pink for something cute today. I've got my trusty turntable, my spatula, a knife to cut the cake, and some white chocolate. I'm going to melt this white chocolate down into the silicon base to give this the base structure of the cake, and it looks amazing. If you don't obviously have two sets like I have here today already washed and clean, ready to go for the base, just take your cake out and wash that before you start the next step. But I'm going to put my white chocolate in the microwave now. I'm going to melt this just really carefully, so only 20 to 30 seconds at a time. I do not want to burn this, so guys be very careful with chocolate because it is expensive, you don't want to get lumps and have to throw it out and start over again. If of course you prefer, put it over a double boiler on the, on the stove top and melt really carefully. But I don't like doing dishes, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it in the microwave and just watch it very carefully. So my chocolate's melted. I've put it in for four intervals of 30 seconds. And now it's just, you can see it's nearly all the way melted, but I want to just keep stirring it because the heat will naturally melt that further. And we don't want to melt it all the way in the microwave because then it may risk burning. So just take it out just before it's ready and keep stirring for about 30 more seconds and you'll find that those last little lumps will melt through naturally. So I've decided to go with just a plain white chocolate today for the base because we do have our coloured buttercreams going on the top half. But of course you can use an oil based food colouring and colour that any colour you wish. It also looks amazing to do it white and then paint it with a pearl luster dust to make it really shiny or even gold or silver too if you have the time. But today we're doing two coats of white chocolate. I much prefer to do two thin coats than one thick coat because then you get a really opaque and strong base which is really important. So I'm just going to go ahead, pour in the first layer and let that set. So I'm going to pour half the chocolate in. At this stage, I don't really mess around with a spatula or anything. I think it's easy enough just to lift it up and you want to rotate it just to get that chocolate right to the edge. And you want to go all the way around just to make sure everything's coated. And then we can let it set and do our second coat. You can't do this with the metal tins. It doesn't work well to get it out. So you really need to buy the silicon ones, but they're very cheap on eBay or any of those online websites. You can see how thin that chocolate ends up being over here. So you, it is really important to do that second coat. Otherwise, when you do take it out, you can see the cake through and it can crack, which looks really bad. So you can see there's quite a bit of excess. So you just want to tip that out now. And I just use my clean hands to go along the silicon edge and just clean that up. And you want to get that in the fridge really quickly before it sinks back down to the bottom. So on the way to the fridge, I kind of just keep rotating it so it doesn't all sink to the bottom. And we're going to fridge that for maybe two or three minutes till it's set. And then we're going to go in with another coat. So while that first layer is setting, I'm just going to move that chocolate out of the way and tip these out and start cutting them so that they can be ready as soon as our base is. So because they're silicon, you can literally just peel off as long as you spray them with oil before cooking. So this is a fun fact, this is one of the first cakes I ever made. So I actually got given the set of silicon moulds for my, I think it was 13th birthday from one of my good friends. And I was a bit scared, I was like, oh wow, this looks really difficult, how am I going to ever do that? So I just gave it a go. The first time was a complete fail, not gonna lie. I overflowed the mixture everywhere. Because they are silicon, you do have to put them on a flat baking tray and you don't wanna overflow them. You'd rather them be a bit under. Um, but I quickly learned how to make them. And by the time I was 14, I was making these giant cupcakes with gifts for people. And I couldn't believe how incredibly easy they were. But everyone was saying, wow, they look fantastic. How do you do that? 
So yeah, they are a great way to get started in decorating and they bring back fond memories for me. So I'm just going to start by turning over the top onto its side. I just take a normal knife, just a sharp one is great, and just slice straight through. We just want to pretty much level that off so it's nice and flat. What I then do is just cut that in half, just so we can have buttercream filling in it, just to make it nice and soft. Set that off to the side. Make sure you don't throw this out. This is perfect for cake pops, or if you just want to break it up on some ice cream or just snack on later. I'm a bit caked out, so we might have to give that away to the neighbors. And then we're just gonna cut the top off the base. And keep going through and take that off. And then just turn through. If you've got any hard bits, just make sure you take them out now because we don't want any crusty bits on our cake. And just keep going back till you can get it level. Now that we've got that cut, we're gonna just slice that one in half so we can fill that. And now we're just gonna set this off to the side until we can add that into our white chocolate mold. So that's nearly set in the fridge. Okay, so I've taken out the first coat out of the fridge and you can see it's quite translucent on the edges. So we definitely need at least one more coat. You have to kind of just look by eye and once it gets nice and solid, we can definitely go ahead. So we're just gonna pour in another coat. This will set a lot quicker this time because it, the chocolate, the first coat is already being chilled in the fridge. So you do have to work quickly and you'll see how much thicker it will come this time and it will stick a lot better because it's not going directly on the silicone, it's just going onto the white chocolate. Oh, perfect amount. <laughs> so just keep rotating and then we want to tip out any excess and then we want to wipe that off so then we get a nice clean crisp edge when we tip it out. And just quickly put that back in the fridge for another few minutes. Now that our white chocolate shell is chilling, we're just gonna go down and trim this cake. So because we have used the exact same mold that we've cooked the cake in for the base, it's just physically not gonna fit in there. So we need to actually reduce the size of the base to put that cake inside the white chocolate mold. So we need to trim down the edges of the bottom cake. I actually leave the top of the cake completely as is because once we add the cake in the base, this is gonna be overhanging anyway, the, the muffin top. So you don't need to trim that at all because you want it to look bigger on the top than the bottom. So we're just gonna set that aside over here. So then what I do is I just literally go on the side with a knife and keep rotating and just shaving off the edge. You really don't wanna to take too much cake off because obviously then you're gonna have not much cake left to eat. So it's best to take off a little bit and once you do this a few times, you get to know how much you need. But I also just trim off a little bit and then once the base is set, we try to put it in. Worst case, you can just trim off a little bit more. Better than taking too much. Now I just try to go through and round it out. So you don't want it to be kind of squared edges. You want to just try and make it as round as possible so it fits nice and snug into that base. So that looks pretty round. You can also shave any more off when we get to putting it in. So I'm just going to leave that there, clean up and we'll be back when our chocolate's set in a few minutes. Okay, so now we've got it set. What I do is a little trick just to take a sneak peek at your base before it gets too late, just to make sure it is opaque enough. So this has been two coats of white chocolate. I just find it depends on what brand I'm using on the day. Um, some are thicker than others. So I just release, I just pull the silicone away from the base. It's good to do it now as well while it doesn't have cake in. And then I just peel it back slightly, just so I can see if it's thick enough. So I can see here that's going to be thick enough for me. It looks nice and solid, but if you do have the time and you want it thicker, definitely go in with another coat of chocolate if you'd like. So I'm just going to put that, oh, just flicked white chocolate all over my face. <laughs> I'm just going to put that back up because we want to keep, we want to keep that silicon on the base because while it's not that cold yet, we need to keep this as sturdy as possible to avoid any cracking. So next thing you're going to do is just take a little bit of buttercream on a spatula and we're just gonna wipe it on the inside 
And this is just gonna give our cake something to stick to. So I do this really roughly, like no one's gonna see this, all they're gonna see is some icing in there. So you don't have to be perfect. And then we're just gonna take our bottom piece first and drop that into the cake. And then we're just gonna take a layer of buttercream. Do any color you like. I've got only pink and green left, so I'm just gonna add some pink buttercream. And I'm just gonna turn it around and fill out and smooth that out. And then grab your next piece of cake and drop that on too. So as you can see, that was trimmed perfect because you still want a layer of icing around the edge because you don't want it just to be all cake. So that's exactly kind of how you want it. And then I'm gonna alternate it and put a bit of green icing this time. And take that same spatula. I wouldn't worry about cleaning the colors in between because the top's gonna be both green and pink anyway. And just push that kind of towards the edge so you get some down the side. If I had more buttercream left, I'm, I'm running tight on buttercream and I really can't be bothered making any more, then I would um, put a bit extra, like a bit thicker layer. But that's totally fine. And then we're just gonna sit our top on. And this time we'll alternate it again so it looks cool to have some pink. And we'll put a bit of green for good measure. We'll do ombre for this layer. That's all you need to do. Layer it and then put our last coat on. So our base is all gonna be covered in that white chocolate. So now all we wanna do is just take off that excess buttercream just off the top bit so it's nice and smooth. And we're gonna pop this in the fridge now for a good 15 minutes. You just want that to solidify enough so that when you do take it out of the case, it's nice and cold and it's not gonna be moving around everywhere. And then when you pipe the top bit, you can easily pipe on, no stress, no worries. So let's put that in the fridge and get chilling. Perfect, now that our giant cupcake is set, I'm just gonna take a little bit of buttercream and pop that in the middle of my board. Ganache or melted chocolate is better here because you're sticking onto chocolate. But because I'm not traveling with it, I'm just gonna use a bit of buttercream because that's what I've got. And then I'm actually just gonna lift it up, this is what I find easiest, and then start peeling that case down. And if I was at work and doing this for a client, I'd put on um, some gloves, because especially because you won't get any fingerprints, but because this is just for me at home, I'm just gonna try to get my hand just underneath anyway. And then you wanna just sit it on, and you'll see how solid that is. So that's just the white chocolate that's making that structure. And you can see how cool that is already, that you get really all the 3D indents of the case, which is awesome. So I'm just gonna take a plastic piping bag with a normal star tip and just roll that down. And I wanna fill one side with the pink and one side with the green. So when we pipe, we're gonna get a two-toned effect. And then you just want to push it down and twist. And you can see there you've got two different sizes of piping bags. That's going to look so cute when it comes out. So here you have a few different options. You can do a rosette pattern, or this time I'm just going to keep it really simple and just do a star. So I'll show you exactly how you do that. Pretty much all you're going to be doing is squeezing, stopping, pulling away, and going along. So first we're going to start along this base edge. So when you start, you want to overlap that base because you don't want to see that messy edge. So you kind of want it to go half over. And all you're doing is squeezing, stopping, and moving around. I like to also turn around my piping bag every so often and keep rotating it so it's not the exact same like formation of pink and green. super simple like literally anyone could do this as long as you have the right consistency buttercream to start with. It's a little bit easier once you get your bottom edge done because you just want to make sure you've covered all that cake. Perfect. Now I'm just going to continue piping so I'm just going to start the next row. 
You just want to make sure that you keep it tight enough that no cake's showing through. Now I'm just going to refill my piping bag. Just be careful when you're refilling, you do want to try to keep the green on the side that you already previously had it, otherwise you can kind of muck up the colour distancing and it will be looking messy. Now I just look at the whole thing and spin it and if there's any gaps that look a little bit uneven I just go in and add a touch more buttercream. This style of piping is amazing because you can literally just add, take off, whatever you need. So if there's any little spots that don't look as raised just go in and do a little squeeze again. But otherwise you've got a very pretty cupcake and it looks like, kind of looks like a range of hydrangea flowers doesn't it? So you can do this with any colour icing you like. You can even do up to like six tones in the bag if you like, if you want to get more of a rainbow look. But I really like the simple two tone. And remember that you can colour your base too. So there's also always different options to include more colour. This would look amazing with a metallic case if I painted that with the food paint now in silver or gold. But I'm going to leave it white today to keep it nice and simple. When you are cutting this cake, it's important to cut the top half, so treat it as two separate cakes to get a nice clean cut. I cut the top half, serve that, and then once that's all gone, you cut the bottom half. Of course, you will need a sharp knife because you are cutting through a chocolate case, but that's what does make it look really realistic and amazing. If you have any edible glitter or sprinkles, you can add that on now, so that's what I'm gonna do. I've got some pearl balls, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of a sprinkle over the top. Lucky last ball, gonna go right on top. All done! This is our giant cupcake with a white chocolate base. If you enjoyed this video today, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below on what future videos you'd like to see from me. Until then, happy baking!